and welcome to Art Day. Happy Monday. I hope you had a great weekend. I sure as hell did and I'm off to a good start today doing artwork. Uh, last week on this show I told you that I would have a project where I'm not really sure how to approach it film-wise, not to bore you to death or put you to sleep, really long sleep, also called hypnosis or coma, whatever you want to call it. I guess I figured it out so far and uh, here's how this show is going to go today. Um, I did pre-work pretty much anything that I thought would be the most boring part or anything that I could do in that one week of uh, work. But um, there's still a few things that I have to do and I'm not having a timer on this particular video here. Uh, when I see that I'm not talking while I do something later in the video and that is kind of repetitious, I'm gonna leave the liberty to me, the freedom, so to say, to be very creative with editing this video, meaning time lapse. Um, so I claim that these are real time videos and I really, really try, but I think that to, uh, around about two hours is, um, well, enough for one show uh, and either have multiple parts, which in this case, since there is so much repetition, I just don't want. So I'm leaving uh, the loophole of having tiny little uh, time lapse parts in there. If you get motion sick or that's really weird to your eyes, I'm gonna uh, have a disclaimer on the screen somewhere. Uh, that says time lapse is going to come up uh, or I'm having it in the description uh, box where you are safe for the real time and just have a disclaimer for any possible time lapse. So before I start this, just check out in the description box um, if there's any uh, anything saying time lapse here and here. Uh, again, since I'm filming this um now and edit way later tonight. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I'm, I don't have a glass ball that's gonna work with things like looking into the future. Anyway, that's enough of a disclaimer thing going on. Let's get to work, right? There's a box. <laughs> It has lots of lunch bags in there. No, we're not going to eat, folks. These are all the finished prep things. These are mostly finished, but I wanted to show you two things um, before we uh, jump into the final two parts of this project. So in these bags, I do have circles. Um, all of the other bags that I showed you, they are currently to the side. There's uh, the circles done and finished to the point uh, that I'm going to work with you here right now. I just uh, set one set apart. So these are 14 um, circles, two and a half inches, and I punched them with this puncher from uh, cardstock. It is, let me look on my handy note, 300 gram cardstock and there were 10 sheets that were 50 by 70 centimeters. So quite the huge format there. So I punched a ton of these circles and I'm going to make leaves. Um, as the name of the video says, this is a cardstock plant that I'm going to do. Uh, there's one spot and we're gonna take you downstairs later in the video and actually assemble the plant. There's one spot where every real plant died on me and I'm I'm sick of it. So I thought, ah, let's make um, a cardstock plant and uh, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just taking a one and a half inch circle now and I'm making leaves and uh, I take pretty much that much away and then I think ah, oh, there's enough space now so yeah I need this kind of a tree mushroom or gingo leaf shaped leaf and I need 14 of those because well there's 14 circles left why there are 14 you might ask because these are the batches that I worked in uh, one branch is gonna have seven leaves so these are two branches pretty much and I just like that to uh, work in badges it's less daunting with 630 leaves plus the ones that are here that I'm gonna cover in a hot second <laughs> let's say minute 
So I am going to stop talking now and quickly punch because this punch is really annoying on audio and I want to edit down the volume of the punching thing. So hold on, folks. Enjoy the music. Okay, now that the loud parts are out of the way, I can put up the volume to the original levels. These are all the leaves, hold on. I have, I've got to clean up the punchy parts because I'm not gonna use them, but I used some of those from earlier leaves to go to bag number two for having a few of those. So I want to have a plant and on top when there's new leaves growing, they're kind of rolled together tiny things. So that is why I kept these here that are also going to be painted. So the next step is, and by the way, so far, just that you know, this is a really long project. So far, I have uh, invested 17 hours of straight hard on Bam, 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 kind of work. So no dilly-dallying into this uh, project. And I'm going to figure I'm going to hit the 20 hour mark. But then again, I don't want to scare you off. Making your own cardboard plants is actually really cool. I'm just making a big one here. And I'm going to link into the descriptions as well. Um, that is not my idea. It was uh, inspired by another artist. Uh, I just forgot her name. This is embarrassing. Hold on. I'm gonna hold and uh, hold on. I find this, uh, I found this, not I find this, I found this in the Flow magazine and I really like the idea. Corey, Corey Bathhawk. She's the original uh, artist coming up with that idea and you see she has a whole thingamajig going on with um, cardboard or paper plants and I really like the idea and uh, that is where I said okay I'm gonna create my own little plant and uh, I'm gonna link to her or mention her and stuff in the description box below so you don't have to write anything down that um, I'm gonna use here, that I'm gonna mention here. It's all in the description box or also on my blog because uh, I think, yeah, for one, I wanna remember and I think it's just easier. There's also gonna be close-up photos and stuff on the blog, just like every week, you know, folks. The web page is in the description box below. So, well, hop on over after this video in case you're interested. So, next step is painting. And I decided to take uh, primary red 
paint and I still have a little bit on my palette here because I was actually painting the last four batches this morning before I started filming. So I'm just going to use that paint. I uh, have a brush here that is very old and I can read what the size is. Where is it? Hmm, don't know, but it's a round brush. Um, medium kind of quality. It's pretty beaten. Meanwhile, I mean, I got it for a couple of years and I'm just going to paint in the veins very, very loosely. So in the end, downstairs, when I take you to the actual assembly of the plant, he's gonna be named or it is gonna be named Charlie, by the way, because I always uh, name my plants because then they don't die on me. Except the ones on that spot. They really gave me grief. So um, I decided to name the paper plant or the cardboard plant, cardstock plant, whatever you want to call it. I decided to name it Charlie as well, just in honor of the palm tree and other plants that I don't know the English words of. Um, on that particular spot. I'm gonna, when I take you downstairs and you can see where uh, Charlie is gonna be, maybe you got an idea why all of the different kinds of plants died on me. Um, it's, uh, I'm, I'm thinking it might be the draft from the balcony door, so it's pretty much next to the balcony door, but I'm not sure, uh, cause light and water were perfect, um, anyway. Um, I'm having a new plant here. So uh, I'm not being very particular with the way the veins, these lines here look, because I'm planning to slightly bend the leaves later on. Also, when you look at nature, yes, from afar, everything looks, looks super perfect and pretty much the same and blah, blah, blah. But if you look close, um, it's actually that there's imperfections in leaves and plants as well, just on the microscopic, tiny little structure. Again, it's perfect geometry and uh, very, very perfect kind of looking. But um, I don't care if there's, there's going to be a few leaves here that I just saw when punching that um, have not the perfect roundness here because they were maybe at the edge of a cardstock. Um, I don't mind because again, it well, the, the imperfection gives it character and uh, I go for the same thing with the veins here. Um, I don't mind them looking wonky. I also don't mind that the punching, the one and a half inch circle punching, um, isn't always the same and makes the like these parts here uh, sometimes narrow, sometimes not, sometimes centered, sometimes not. I don't care. I actually like the wonkiness there. And uh, again, since I plan to bend, slightly bend those leaves later on, um, again, I don't care. Uh, if I counted correctly, and I think I did, because I used a calculator to do the math, <laughs> I uh, punched 630 leaves for Charlie. See here, there's the imperfection I was talking about. There's one wonky stem. Don't care though. Um, but there's uh, 630 leaves, and I hope that is enough to make a lush looking plant there. Here's another imperfection. See, it's not round. Again, don't care. It's kind of character for Charlie. So the nice thing is, you saw on the tube of the paint that I really used a bright magenta looking uh, paint there, but it, once it's dry, it, it looks kind of brown. And here's why. Um, I don't know if you remember color theory and uh, that little stuff there, all that knowledge, but here's the thing. Green and red are opposites. Together, they make brown or gray or mud, depending on what kind of a red and what kind of a green you have. So, 
even though I have a very heavy pink here, uh, magenta on top of the green, it looks kind of red brown ish, like a maroon almost in the end. So, um, that actually is a really nice tiny little thing. So, for these little leaves here, I'm just doing something like this. I don't care as much because, again, they're gonna be glued to the top because so these are the new leaves coming up. Uh, the one thing that I recommend with this kind of a project, if you don't have a heat gun, let it dry uh, naturally. Don't take a blow dryer to it, no matter how low your setting is. Uh, but I tried one batch with a um, blow dryer and let me tell you, they went flying. I kind of thought they would, but I wanted to give it a try because, well... Um, Waiting 20 minutes to do something with a batch of these uh, leaves it kind of was not the greatest idea or thought that I maybe had. So I thought, well, let's just give it a try with a blow dryer. And uh, nope. I instead decided to take multiple of these cardboards, make four batches. And once I'm done with all of the acrylics, I start at the first one, go uh, on with the next step that I'm gonna show you later. It will involve a gel pen. And once I'm done with all of that gel pen work, I can paint four more batches all in one go. And once I'm done with that, uh, with the last one, the first one will be dry. So I need more color paint. And that kind of um, assembly line work style really worked well for me. So I just need a very little bit. So I, I went through cycles of uh, 14, uh, but 14 by 4, that's 54. 54, uh, what's it called, leaves in one go and then going on to the next 54. That's what I did over the last two days. I also had to punch the remaining, a very few amount of um, uh, circles before I could actually paint. But yeah, I decided to do most of the prep work on this, on this particular um project here because again it's repetition you know and I think it's uh, it's best to just let you see once here what I'm doing and you can imagine that all of the other batches did not work any different so I don't need to bore you with that kind of repetitious work but, you know, um, some projects, some art projects are, well, they take very long because there's a lot of tiny little fiddly things uh, or there are layers and layers and layers of work, of uh, paintwork that you have to put in to, well, make it look like something you want. And then there's the very quick... Um, projects that sometimes just take 20, 30, 50 minutes. But this certainly was not one of them. So far, it proves to be a longer one. But I just want to let you know that it takes that long. I know that in videos, um, artwork or crafting looks DIY. It looks so simple and it looks so quick. And nobody tells you that, well, YouTubers usually are really good at cutting videos and editing videos. And um, they, of course, I can make it look easy. <laughs> and and fast, but uh, I just want to let you know what the real time is that I used here. So all of that is painted. I'm going to clean my palette and bring my brush to the sink because I don't need it anymore. And then we can move on to the next step, which is the gel pen. All right, oh. Let's see. Uh, let's start with this one here. 
could get away with gel penning that. At least some of them. Let's see. Let's do the dabbing. Yep, they dry. Ooh, <laughs> they fly. <laughs> hey, that rhymes. So uh, I'm just to add a little bit of interest and uh, contrast and something I thought on top would be nice to have a little bit of a white on the veins. And you can see here, this is the kind of like the maroon color I was talking about. This is not magenta it, by no means, not even close. But that's the nice thing. But you have to remember that if you use colors on top of a colored cardstock, um, you have to know which color you want to have in the end and then choose the color uh, to use to get you there. So would I have had, I don't know, uh, a blue maybe, a cold blue? I would have gotten maybe something of a purple more uh, depending on, um, well, not a purple, but so there would have been in, in green, there is blue and yellow. This has more of a yellow than a blue because it is a very, uh, well, apple greeny uh, green here. It's a May green pretty much. So uh, by having, let's say, a cold blue, so an ultramarine maybe, I would have gotten probably a very dark green looking like um, like an iron green in the tense so very cold looking dark looking green uh, would I have said use something like a Prussian blue maybe that is more of a warmer blue it has kind of like a yellowish tint to it um, I would have gotten maybe something like a dark hookers green or something but more of a warmer one um, you have to know what you want and then you can uh, choose the color that you need to get there. So the last big leaves Then I can batch them back into the bags and it really helps with these big uh, projects to have them in badges though you though I put them in the bag and out of the bag and in the bag and blah, 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 blah. And you might find that annoying or hideous, but um, I like to work in batches. It's less daunting, like I said, to paint 14 pieces of um, cardstock instead of 630. It's just a mind thing that you're not uh, standing there and saying, oh, I'm never going to finish that. And then you just push it uh, to the side and will really never finish the project and the other thing is that um, I, I don't have to count or I ha don't have to fiddle and make sure that there's no cardstock clinging to another cardstock piece when it comes to the next part which is gluing so let me see yep there they look good as well they look really good. Come on, come to mama. Don't cling to the cardstock. Why are you? Oh, because I painted the side. <laughs> Oopsie. So let's just bop, 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 bop. go like this. Because these are the tiny little new leaves. But I'm gonna come on top of the plant. Oop! <laughs> that didn't work. Alright. So, this is also one of the longer projects that uh, in prep work. I didn't do like every day because well I'm doing uh, lots of projects pretty much every day and I can only squeeze a couple of minutes or hours of punching into each day to prep this big one here. So I actually started in early January because the cardstock was the Christmas gift uh, 
from my mom because I said I want to do that plant and um, I would really love to get some of that cardstock for Christmas. Uh, we you don't usually gift each other things on Christmas. We we are a family of gifting things to each other whenever we feel like it and not uh, only just on a particular day. So, uh, but this time around, I actually had a wish for Christmas. So she very generously gifted me with the cardstock. And um, I can now finish uh, putting Charlie together. So I started in January and punched circles until now. Every so often. Not on the days that I had a migraine, for example. I don't want to... The, the orange puncher is really loud. Um, so let's try the gel pen for a minute. So it took quite a while now. It's me. I mean, come on. But yeah, uh, this is not a project that you can probably do, at, at least not in that size. If you have a tiny little plant, a cactus or something, or a tiny little thingamajig, you can definitely do that in like 20 minutes if you have all the materials at home. But this one here is a big sucker, so I needed a bit more time. Whoop. Let's put all of them in here. Next step, I need... Um, how am I gonna proceed? I'm gonna take the cardboard and I'm gonna have... Can you see? There's my hot glue gun. Which I'm gonna use in a minute. I also have the um, the thing to hold. What's it called? Wickeldraht. Yeah. Mm. Wire. That's the word I'm looking for. It's a wire. So I'm gonna just snip lots and lots of wire now. For... Uh, hold on. Put it in a bowl just to not send it flying everywhere. So let me just show you what I want to do. So that you have an idea. So the, the branch should look something like this in the end. <laughs> so these should kind of overlap and again they're going to bend something like this. And then there's the top here and the wire goes something like this and all of these leads are gonna be glued to wire. The front one is the one that uh, I'm gonna cut downstairs because the other end here is gonna attach to the um, rod, the brass rod that is actually gonna be the stem. So I'm just gonna uh, have six of these uh, leaves attached to a little bit of um, wire with the glue here maybe cut it like this so that I can just attach it to the middle branch wire that will attach to the brass uh, thing what's it called brass rod oh gosh I had the word earlier god damn so I'm just gonna snip 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 Lots of wire pieces, and I think that is enough. So, something like six or eight centimeters, and I'm just eyeballing. And this is going to be one of the tedious uh, parts, so I'm going to shut up now so that I disclaimer warning T time lapse. <music>
So I just switched to my Yuhu glue gun instead of the fancy Bosch one. It's really fancy, the one from Bosch, but uh, not made for the, let's say, motorically challenged, also called clumsy people, like me. So I'm going to the one that doesn't have a button where you hold in the middle to uh, have the glue not squirt and everything. I'm just gonna take my Yuhu glue gun and, well, maybe have it a bit easier for me there. Let's see, are you hot? Oh, you're getting there. Let me give it a, another second. Because that is just very frustrating for me when I have glue everywhere where I don't need it and it's not going to go where I need it. It's a really cool thing uh, working without um, a cord. So that's actually why I thought, ah, let's take Hubby's uh, glue gun. But no, I'm, I'm just not. You saw he can really do it well. I can't. Okay. Yep, it's hot. It's definitely a hot one here. I can even do that with my right hand, which is not the dominant one. And I might think to go to the other hand. Do I want to switch to the other hand? I guess so. So let's just do that. It's going to be a mess here on this. Gosh, really? No, it's the same glue. You are going in there. No, you're not. What's wrong with this mental thing here? Hmm? Come on. Sorry if you hear the printer in the background, but uh, I did run out of the brown wire, so I'm only having this wire left. It's about 10 meters or 30, I don't remember, it didn't say on the label. But what I'm going to do now is I'm not going to have 
every leaf wired up but just one wire per branch so that would be three four five six seven for this one and uh, I think well I'm gonna do it like this I'm gonna cut it once I glued everything so need the beginning putting in the wire this is a bit stronger wire than the brown one was Now I'm going to just tiny dots here and glue them to the wire. on a zigzag something like this which saves me quite a bit of wire so I'm not gonna run out prematurely
so I'm at the last little bit to glue and that is oh come on there we go and that is the butts so how am I wanting to do that? I think I want three or four maybe of them. Something like this. They need to be double sided. So, something along these lines here. Hope this works. Now, very quickly, put these on there. Ouch, that was hot. And one more. Here and oh, come on, really? No, there we go. Ha, I'm winning. Ouch, ouch, ouch. That's my finger. Ouch. Uh, pro tip don't burn yourself. It's the first time, the last part, I'm burning myself. Really, Sarah? Really. Ah, so it will look something like this. Need to have another one. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, two, four. Six, seven, eight, all right. Like that. Another bit of wire. Let's glue this down. and like this little more on here and uh, there and I'm gonna tug these few leaves where I think they should go one here how does the other side look oh well the other side needs one more and 
that is the final part gluing now gonna take a break eat dinner and then i'm gonna meet you downstairs where i will assemble charlie so <laughs> let's see what the time says how long i've been working that would be four and a half hours so that would be 21 hours so far see you in a magic second post dinner let's put charlie together I hope this is not too hideous with audio, but I'm sitting in the hallway and uh, it's a bit echoey here. That's three, seven. And I'm gonna divide all of the branches I did earlier. Um, and I'm gonna sort through the ones that and choose the ones that are with seven leaves only, so the biggest ones. Because they go on bottom and the smaller the, um, the branches are, the higher they go on Charlie. I didn't fart, it was just the chair. So this is a brass rod and it goes to the bottom of this uh, flower pot. And there's those white stones in there, like 30 kilograms. So this is really, it's uh, sturdy, I'd say. So, but the brass rod is pretty, um, well, let's say slick. So not to have all of my leaves go south, I thought I'm going to make a bumper up to here maybe and then so because I want the white stones to be visible so I'm going to have a bit of that wire up to here and then start stacking my leaves pretty much. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, have this wire which has rubber around the wire actually. I'm going to put that around. Let's see. Put that around the brass rod. I've got all the sevens done that are in one glued branch already. <laughs> and now I'm not sure how much I need of the sevens that I have to put together. So in order to save myself some work, I'm gonna start with the top now and the threes and then the fives and then fill in any spots with the other sevens there at the end. Because if I don't need them, I might just make a second plant with that for the living room. But I have to figure that out later. Oh, these are the fives. I need the threes on the other side. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Of course. 
course I need my number ones. Oh, I put them there. I think. Yeah, there they are. Number ones. Number threes. Slightly, but I cannot reach under all of these leaves. But here we go. Let's 
put you where you belong. He's in his space. This is my new plant. Hopefully, well, it's not gonna die, that's for sure, but um, hopefully uh, it likes the place. Uh, with the balcony here, I'm very happy with how it turned out. Uh, it looks kind of organic, hobby approved, so that's good. It doesn't look like a plastic plant, you know. So this is Charlie's new spot. I have a few of the leaves left. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with those. Maybe I just keep them in case something falls off here. But I'm tired now. It's getting dark and I've been at this pretty much all day. And the last three days, almost all day. And many, many, many hours of punching before that. Uh, I think it's worth the effort to put something in your house, maybe in a smaller scale, then you're quicker with that. Um, I'm very happy that I saw the article in the Flow magazine talking about uh, cardboard or paper plants. So I will see you next week with a new project. I thank you very much for watching. I hope you're not mad at me that I put in so much time lapse, but you will find out. I don't know actually how long it took because I'm not sure how long this track was, but before I started, I was at uh, about 20, 21, 22 hours. So um, uh, plus what I just filmed here, and that is definitely not doable in a, well, unboring, real-time fashion. So forgive me for the time lapse next week. There is going to be uh, only real-time, I promise. I will be back with a new project. If you have comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I would very much appreciate that. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Welcome to art and board games and weird little things that I do. Uh, well, maybe not every week, but quite frequently, I'd say. Have a wonderful day, folks. Take good care and uh, happy week. Have a great one. Bye-bye, folks. Finished! <laughs>